What's up y'all, I'm Reed the Fishmonger and today we're gonna cut up a gorgeous yellow edge grouper. Yellow edge grouper is a deep water member of the grouper family. My friend Anthony caught this in 800 feet of water out in the Gulf. Down there, the water is colder, so they build up some of those cold water fats that make it just a fluffy, white, sweet meat. Absolutely delicious, one of my favorites. Excited to get it cut up for you. I'm gonna pick up the fin, go behind the head at an angle. These large groupers have plenty of meat all the way up behind the head, so you wanna make sure when you're making that initial cut, you're going at the hard angle back there to not lose any of that delicious grouper meat. We're gonna go right at that opening, just the tip of our knife, and slide all the way down. Rest our knife right on top of the skeleton and start pulling towards the head. Look how beautiful that yellow edge grouper meat is. Now we gotta do one quick cut right there to release that head meat. Tip of the knife, base of the ribs, angle it slightly up, make sure your knife's not floating, you want it resting on the skeleton, and there you go. We just separated the connection the pin bones make to the ribs. Now you can get a taller lift on your fillet without ripping any of the meat. We still have a couple of the rib bones on there. They're easy to cut out. Flip it around and gently shave those off. A Little bit of the membrane on there. There's our beautiful grouper filet. We left a little bit of the belly meat on the skeleton. We don't wanna leave any of that behind, so we're gonna cut that off and get to that later. All right, flip her over. Lift up the fin. You can feel where the bone is and where the meat starts. Right at that point is where you want to be, slipping your knife underneath. Tip of the knife right at that opening, slide all the way down. Rest your knife right on the skeleton and slide down. Little cut right here. Releasing that head meat. Now that we can lift up higher on it, we can hit the second side. Tip of the knife, base of the ribs, angle it slightly up. Separating the connection the pin bones make to the ribs. Belly left on the filet, don't leave it behind. The rib bones are gonna end right about there. You wanna stick your knife right in front of that and separate that. That is an absolutely delicious cut of the grouper. Never leave them behind on your fish. And we'll trim those up later for you, see how we do it. So after you're done filleting your grouper, you've got a lot of meat still going on in here. You don't wanna be wasting it. So right here, some people call it the grouper wing, some people call it the grouper throat. I call it delicious. You can remove the whole wing and cook it bone in. You'll get more meat out of it that way. But what I'm gonna show you guys today is how to get a boneless, skinless piece because that's what most people watching are gonna wanna do and it's much easier. So you find the bone that's attached to this pectoral fin. Once you find that bone, you start sliding into it. Allow that bone to guide your knife as you slide towards the under lip of the fish. You're gonna go on the other side of this pelvic fin and there's another bone. You're gonna let the pelvic fin bone guide your knife. And we're just going to release it and it'll come right out. Whew. Look at the size of that grouper collar. That right there is my favorite part of the entire fish. We're gonna flip her over, feel around this area with your finger. You'll find that bone right in front of it and let that bone guide your knife. Go all the way up underneath the throat. Then 
find the bone attached to this pin, slide all the way up, release. There's your grouper collars. We're gonna get these guys boneless, skinless. Well, they're already boneless. We're gonna get them skinless. We're gonna remove the membrane and that is just cream of the crop fish right there. Now let's get the cheeks off. When you're cleaning out the cheeks, please be careful. This gill plate right here, you can see this slit. That is extremely sharp. Please just do not cut yourself. When you're removing the cheek, you can feel where the bone starts and the meat begins. That's what you're going to be outlining so we're gonna stick the tip of our knife in right at that line. And we're just gonna outline all the way around the line. If you have your knife resting against the bone, instead of pushing into the meat, we're resting against the bone. You can just let that bone guide your knife. It makes it super easy. We're gonna use mostly just the tip of the knife to scoop in, so that way we're not losing any of that delicious cheek meat. Oh yeah, look at that. You guys are about to get one of my favorite parts about cleaning a grouper. And it's right here, this noise. Love that noise. Look at that. That is a gorgeous grouper cheek right there. Flip her over. We're gonna outline the cheek. That bad boy's gonna pop right out. We're gonna make a nice incision right there. That way. Oh yeah. Let's get that fish ASMR going. All right, we've got the cheeks. We've got the collars. We've got the fillets. We've got the bellies. What else can we get off of this guy? Rib meat. We're gonna take our knife and you're gonna find the opening of the rib bones and slide underneath them. Right underneath them, scrape those rib bones. There's not a lot of meat here and you don't wanna lose what little bit there is. There we go, yep. Slide underneath there. Beautiful. One left. Awesome. Now you have these rib bones with the rib meat detached. This one you just kinda gotta pull out of there. There you go. It's not a big piece, but it is a tasty morsel. Do that to the other side. Slide underneath that rib bone. Slide underneath that next rib bone. Just keep sliding, just keep sliding. All right. Beautiful. What are we gonna do with this? And this. There's still plenty of meat left in between all of these bones. When we're filleting, we got as close to that bone as we could. You can hear it, but the dips in between them, that is a tasty morsel. So let's go ahead and get all of them. And we can scrape right behind these ribs. Usually get a little bit of meat that was left behind. Flip her over.
And look at that. You can have an entire ceviche lunch just off of the meat that was in between those bones. All right, let's trim up some of these cuts. Let's start with our bellies. Grouper belly, absolutely delicious. It's gonna be thin, loaded with fat. It's so good and a nice hot pan. This isn't like a tuna belly. You do wanna cook this all the way through, but when it's cooked all the way through, it's still gonna be buttery and delicious. And bonus points if you can get it crispy. Gonna remove the skin first. I wanna get to the edge of my cutting board so that way I can have a flat knife. So once you get under there, you're gonna to wanna to flatten your knife out and not push down very hard to run on the surface of that membrane. That membrane is super easy to cut through and that's how you do it without cutting through it. Let's do up the other one. Get on a corner, get underneath the skin, slide on through. Now we're gonna remove the membrane. Get under there, flat knife, not applying a lot of pressure, sliding right on top of the membrane, and boom. Got a paper thin piece right there, no meat loss. That's a thing of beauty right there. Now if you've never had grouper belly and a hot cast iron pan, do yourself a favor, run over to your local market or run offshore and get some going. Let's do up the collars. Collars are gonna be the same way. We're gonna remove the skin and the membrane. Skin's gonna be the same, but removing the membrane is gonna be not challenging, but a little different because it doesn't lay flat like the grouper belly does. So you can have two options. You can lay it down like this, get underneath there, and try to run with it. We were able to get it. Or you can get a good starting point and work it like this. Either way works, whatever you're more comfortable with. Now, if you've never had collars off of a large, fresh, locally caught grouper, you're missing out. These are amazing. The rib meat does not have any skin on it. It does have membrane. Just gonna be a quick remove, just like the other ones. Cheeks take no trimming at all. Those are just ready to go, right as they are. Now when it comes to our filet, we've got the high loin, we've got the low loin. When it comes to portioning this out, I like to find the last pin bone, go right in front of it. Look how beautiful that fish is. That is just absolutely gorgeous fish. And you've got this piece right here, right at the top of where the belly would be. The belly would be right here. I call that the shoulder. That's the pin bone line, the skin from where the shoulder was. Don't need it. We're gonna do the same thing this filet. Oh, got a couple of loose rib bones right there. We're gonna find the last pin bone. We're gonna go right in front of it. Cut straight across. Take a moment to appreciate that beautiful fish. 
run right along that pin bone line, scoop out, and there's the other yellow edge grouper shoulder cut. Now we're gonna go on the other side of the pin bone line. Just remove that entire thing. All right, we've got the upper high loin right here. The reason why we cut it right where we did was right behind those last pin bones, it flattens out. So instead of having an all high loin, low loin, once you get past the upper high loin where the shoulder meat ends, you have a more symmetrical cut in the front. So we've got these nice symmetrical cuts here and we have a nicer symmetrical cut here. So at the seafood market, this is often how my fillets would go into the display case and then I would cut them down based off of customer's specifications. But for you guys, I'm gonna show you how I would cut it for different purposes. Sauteing in the pan, this is what I would do. Feeding two people, you want about six to eight ounces each, unless you're larger or smaller eaters. So we're gonna go for a beautiful piece that is just under a pound. That is gonna be two perfect portions. That's, this is the top of the upper high loin. So what we just got right here is center cut high loin. If I'm sauteing it in the pan, I'm gonna remove the skin. We're gonna go right in the middle. And if I was cooking in a saute pan, that's how I would cut my grouper. Now, if you're grilling, you could do the same thing. I would just leave the skin on. The skin helps hold in the moisture, and I'll show you. If I'm feeding two adults, Go for a nice, just under a pound piece right there. Unless you're a bigger, smaller eater. Now there's already no bones in there, so we don't have to worry about that. We took that out when we were taking the shoulder cuts out. You're ready to go. If you guys have any questions, comment below. We'll see you next time. Have a killer day.